This is FedWatch on Zacks.com. The Federal Open Market Committee has released another decision on interest rates. As expected, the Fed has lowered the Fed funds rate by a half point to 1%, the lowest in four years, in a move designed to help ease the financial crisis. This is the ninth time the Fed has lowered rates since September of 2007 in an effort to deal with this problem. Once again, we turn to Zacks.com senior market analyst Charles Roplut for some interpretation. They also lowered the discount rate, by the way. I failed to mention that to one and a quarter percent. Another half point cut. Right. And you were calling for the half point cut. You were in that camp. You were certainly not in the camp that said it could go under one percent. However, that camp still exists. And there are people saying that by the end of the year, we could see under one percent. Uh, absolutely. And one of the things the Fed did is they moved to a very neutral stance on inflation for the first time and who knows when, probably 2007, they actually said that they talked about price stability versus inflation moderating versus saying we expect prices to moderate. They're now saying price stability will exist. That really leaves the door open for them to do whatever they want in the coming months. Uh, what they'll do at the next meeting, which will be early December, anybody's guess right now, I think we have to see what happens to the economy with the markets. Um, as I say on a blog post on our website, I think more important is what we're seeing in the LIBOR rates, the, the overnight rates in London. Mm -hmm. We're seeing those rates come down. For the consumers listening, that actually has a direct impact on your credit card rates because those vary depending on LIBOR. But more importantly, we had seen those rates, those rates spiked up. And really in the last week or so, we're seeing them coming down. And the Fed is that, so I think that's really important. The other thing I want to add is that we're seeing the Fed really doing a lot in terms of providing liquidity and support to financial institutions, banks. There's now talk about maybe GMAC trying to get in on this. And I think those two things have a bigger impact than rate cuts. That said, cutting rates is psychological. It sends a signal that, yes, we're concerned, and yes, as the Fed, we will do whatever it takes. So I think from a psychological standpoint, cutting 50 was the right thing to do. You bring up some good points. Let's take them one at a time. Sure. You talk about the, the LIBOR rate. Mm -hmm. uh, you also have to mention when you're talking about the LIBOR rate, the TED spread, because those are two key indicators of market risk. And the lower the number goes, the, it's indicative that the more risk investors are willing to take on. So that's a good sign. Sto Absolutely. Stock market uh, met the news of the Fed uh, rate cut today with a bit of a yawn. This market you know, took an initial dip down but then recovered and as we speak is on uh, either side of break even. Um, however, the Fed in the closely scrutinized statement acknowledged the downturn in the economy due partly to a big drop in consumer spending. So their eyes are still there. They're focused still on the consumer. Oh, absolutely. And they're watching consumer spending. They're watching business spending. They talked about businesses having potential problems getting financing. And as I've said all along, we're dealing with a psychological problem. Is the economy struggling? Yes. Are we going to have negative GDP growth this quarter? Yes. Is unemployment going to rise? Yes. But now that I've depressed everybody, yeah, right. <laughs> Thank the, you. The, the bigger thing, though, is this is a psychological problem of banks not trusting each other. And if a bank doesn't trust another bank to repay its loan, neither bank is going to trust you, you, or me right. to repair loans. But we're starting to see this credit thaw a little bit. As what we're seeing the LIBOR rates, it's, in, it's suggesting that people are becoming a little bit more trustworthy. Not there yet. But that's a big thing. If we can get banks lending to each other, we'll start to see the recovery. Now, keep in mind, as the recovery starts to take hold, we'll still see jobs being shed. We'll see the economy struggling. And therefore, the timing of when we'll see the rebounds really hard to predict. Uh, however, we are looking ahead at more tough times in the economy. This said, we are starting to see a thawing in the credit markets. And so I think we're hopefully we're past through the worst of it in terms of the credit crunch. There'll be a delayed effect on how it affects other parts of the economy. But the sooner we get credit loosened up, the sooner we get banks trusting each other, the quicker we'll see a rebound. And so I think we're heading in that direction. Way too early to say, yes, the credit freeze is over, the credit crunch is over. But at least in the very, very short term, and I want to stress very short term, we are moving in the right direction. Well, another piece of good news came out earlier today from the Mortgage Bankers Association. Apparently, according to their latest survey, uh, mortgage applications are up 17% due to lower interest rates. 
However, on the flip side of that argument or that line of reasoning is the fact that low rates can also feed inflation, something the Fed may have to sacrifice here in their fight against this financial situation. Absolutely. I should point out the month, the, sorry, the monthly, the weekly mortgage applications data is very volatile. It's like initial jobless claims. You can't say, look at one week and say, oh, this is good. You really have to look at the trend. And the reality is homes are not selling. People not only have a hard time getting affordable mortgages, they're also having a hard time making their payments or buying new houses. Now, the people who have sat on the sidelines with cash in their pocket, making smart moves, they're going to step up and buy some houses. We're not going to see home sales just stop completely, but we are going to see them be depressed for a while, and that's going to hurt housing prices. So definitely the consumer is struggling, and we're going to see a struggling consumer for a while. That's just the way it is. Um, in terms of inflation, you're right. In the future, we will see uh, we will see higher inflation. We will have a massive federal deficit to deal with. And I think history will be a critical judge of what the Fed is doing right now. That said, in a crisis situation, it's always better to, do, to act now than to not act at all. And so I think kudos deserves to go to the Fed, even if they're making a mistake right now, that at least they're doing something and they're sending a big note out to the markets. We know there's a problem. And yes, we're going to do something about it. So based on that statement, I will take that as an indication that you really believe that this is not the least important step the Fed could take in its fight uh, to get this whole financial crisis back on track. No, I think it's a positive. I think its impact might be somewhat limited and debatable, but I think since we're doing with a, dealing with a psychological problem, I think this is a good thing to happen. Okay. Once again, the Fed has lowered its key interest rates and has indicated that they are going to be on top of this entire situation, this current financial crisis that they are trying to deal with. With Charles Roplet, I'm Terry Ruffalo.